was terrific. Now, let's see about first thing. Um, I do not be aware of the acoustics. So it's, of course, now a little drier than when you rehearsed. So the immediate effect is that that thing needs more space. And I just wonder whether you can make a real effort to play a, a mini so quicker. And so you've got to encourage your colleague here so that she doesn't feel, oh no, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you've got to give confidence like real Sefcik. Right? Or Kratzer. So the first thing is just give a bit more bow. Don't be scared if it sounds like too much. All right? Softer. Okay, now, can you also do this business of Taram, the top bum, and then you go crossover. Bora, bora, bora. Bora, bora, bora. You're getting there too easily, right? And then you should play freely, and she has to accompany you. So there's no way that she should just say, right. So just more playful. I think that's the thing. There's just and just be relaxed about it. And if you need time to get down, take time. And she'll, the next time, if you take a bit of time, next time she'll realize, hopefully. This thing, I know you've got, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. But surely, <coughs> or <coughs> no accent. <coughs> Can you just play this as if it's? <coughs> Just try and include the two upbeats. Okay? That was fantastic. You see, that when you arrived at the, the semiquavers, you sort of felt, right, yep, I've got a sporting chance. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great. Okay? Yeah. All right. That was great. Now, do it, can you do it once more? So, remember when you start, because this will be at the beginning of the concert almost certainly. Give sound a chance. <laughs> play almost too slow and with your nerves and everything else it'll be the right tempo don't worry about it <laughs> okay, just Which way are you ending up? Uh, With your bowing? Uh, A lifting there. Yeah. So I use the sound. Do, for, during your up, your down bow, you have to continue singing. Yeah? Just try and think they're going. 
you know. It should sound like that, but because it's loud, we're using more bow. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, do you mind doing from your the fast stuff? <laughs> Well, keep even. It's a lot of contact. Really legato. Use as much bow as possible and sing. Sounds mad. Sing all the way to the top. Okay? Just make sure it's lyrical. more time that if I analyzed it you still need to be more even in the middle so and try this time just joining softer yeah. All right. when you join just fit into what, what's right. happening in the violin and then crescendo let's see what happens The other thing I noticed is that we don't really get a chance in this movement to play lyrically. So you, you're playing catch up all the time. You know, oh my God. Just sing when you get to it. So can you go from just literally there, yeah, from when you do. Give her room. It's, it's, it just get, it, it's like you're thinking, right, don't take any liberties, don't do anything funny, it's not going to be together. I promise you, if you play musically, each of you, it'll be together, providing you use your ears. If you try to play together and, you know, keep going with a artificial steady beat, uh, uh, in other words, metronome beat, it's not going to be together. So there are hundreds of places where you can take a little bit of time. And the, the big thing is that we shouldn't notice that you're doing it. Right? But we do notice when you don't take time. Because we, are, uh, the whole audience is, and they don't, they can't breathe. <laughs> Because you're not breathing. <laughs> and after a while, they start fainting. <laughs> okay? So it's an exchange. Imagine you're not such a good violinist. That's all. You need time to get from there to there. Right? Thank you. 
This is our favorite finger. This is the fourth finger. <laughs> and you sort of make it sound like it's not a fourth finger. <laughs> yeah. mm. And after, that was great. More of a sort of bell. more in the middle of the bow, not because you're in the wrong part of the bow. Yeah? Can we do the same thing from there? Yeah, I need to go on the crotchet, real dolce. Can you just give it a bit more room with your accompaniment? Just take it easy. Because the piano cannot do that. Yeah. It's a sforzato. It's tatiram. I mean, but definitely you should sing. So make sure that note rich, then a whip. If you do that, I think it sounds good. Yeah? But um, now, going back to this. Possible, but I wonder which you prefer. <laughs> I don't know because it, it it just sounds it's so spooky this bit. Mm. It's the exact opposite of a <laughs> so I just wonder if you can just take off and go. Can you do the spooky bit? Yeah. Try with more direction. forward but I'm pulling you back <laughs> not just simply going forward so a bit more first finger a bit more sostenuto and still trying to go forward okay now is there a shape to this phrase
third note, and then release. say to you listen to the pianist to play this correctly but she didn't play it well either <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned about that lifted yes it was fantastic before that so where do you want to start you want to do, do from where you go mad <laughs> yes Right, take your time. Yeah. Just go da da di da four four notes before the return. It's funny, you know, um, the, this is where the, the hours of boring technical work come to fruition, right? And we never practice, I mean, we, uh, you know, we're told, right, practice your scales. Practice your thirds. There, not many people practice... For example, so here we're faced with this ridiculous, <laughs> which we don't practice. <laughs> so either you've got strong and even enough fingers, both of you, you know, so you can just say, oh, it's no problem, I've done all my, my hours of <laughs> all your, st whatever you do on the piano, all our stuff. So it needs, the, you both need to play evenly and at the same speed. And it's much easier on the piano than it is on the violin. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> but you know, we've got many more ways of playing it wrong. So initially, you could do that sort of thing. But ideally, we don't want. So it just needs fantastic even play. Okay, right, come on, let's jump to the second movement. There's something completely different. Just before they play it, this is, um, read the title of what you have. Andante di Tosto e Allegretto. Okay, so there's Andante and there's Allegretto. Let's, let's see what they do. <laughs> Up here. We'll do some of it perhaps just to see.
To warn you that I mean I have heard these uh, two young ladies play this piece before, so we've had words about this. <laughs> so it's not, um, you know, first time. Um, and the what we've discussed so far with this movement is that not only is this an andante, but going towards an allegretto, but in a very interesting book by Carl Czerny where he talks about every single one of Beethoven's pieces with piano, he refers to this sonata. And he gives an incredibly fast metronome mark for this. To the extent where we think, well, it's crazy, not possible, we know better, etc. Uh, and what happened was that I think you started you had a good attempt at this element of Andante and Allegretto, and then every phrase became more and more lyrically culpable. And we are almost had the handkerchiefs out. <laughs> you know? You know what? I just wonder if you can play without slowing up every phrase. Can you just try? Think, think of a dramatic like a Monteverdi opera. doesn't matter which way around it is, you're not pulling. Can you try from your entry? You're doing all of Dumbo, right? Get to the up bow.
tempo. It's that critical. We shouldn't hear the break. Just straight through. fraction, I think your next phrase is going to be more in tempo. Mm -hmm. Can we do it with the, the right notes this time? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was very cute. <laughs> good, good alternative to Beethoven. <laughs> Can you do the last? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I'm really trying to convince, I suppose, convince you to do, because, you know, tomorrow you're going to do it on your own, and then you might go back to this sort of beautiful playing. Um, there's, th there are a lot of artists who think to make music meaningful is to slow up. Slow up at the end of each phrase at the end of movements and I would try not to do that and so I go back what I'm trying to do really is for you to play it more like Mozart although it's early Beethoven you know at the ends of phrases in Mozart almost always it's a tempo the trill you know so And, you know, some people might be moved by that, genuinely. But then, gradually, it gets slower, and then it gets slower, and, slower, and then, if you took a vote amongst people, say, 
was the word allegretto present in this performance? They'll say, no. It's a beautiful andante. Very well played. Full stop. <laughs> and there are plenty of beautiful andantes in the repertoire which are very well played, but this just happens to be pure tosto allegretto. Okay, so should we continue? From, that's where we got to, yeah? It just sounds a bit sad to me. It's like you don't want to play it. It's just that you don't want to do it somehow. I just wonder if it can be more optimistic, that note. Sound and intonation. See that note. I don't mean sharp. It's just going. Give it more life. Morph, morph. Yes. Now. Descending is not static and like uh, the end of a Chopin piece, you know, everybody's got the handkerchiefs out. So the, that element right at the end when I said Allegretto, mm -hmm. it can be put in that mold, if you like. And then there's a happy stuff in the last movement to follow as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.